Hey everybody, welcome to Northern Thailand. Listen, this is not clickbait, it's not snake oil, it's nothing of the such, but it is possibly cheating in your garden. That's how good this is, what we're getting ready to review today. This is chitosan. Now, I didn't start using it until this year because I've actually been researching it for the past couple of years. And the reason is because I wanted to make sure it was everything that was being touted to be. Plus, last year I was busy getting trees put into the ground for the very first time here on this property. And I didn't want to throw too many things at it at once. I was still busy trying to answer the question of, is mycorrhiza plus biochar actually double good or not? Well, I think I have the answer to that question. At different levels in the soil, they do work together. But now, I'm going to be adding this chitosan as both a pre and a post treatment to my compost tea regime. So let's take a look at it together and see what it's all about. Gang, listen, if you've never heard of chitosan before, join the club. I'm going to tell you what, I have been looking at this since late 2019 and in addition to what I shared in the opening, part of the reason why I haven't really pulled the trigger on moving forward with this just yet is I was having a devil of a time being able to really confirm some of the early information that I found back in 2019 and in 2020 until just this year. And now that I have, I got to tell you, I'm really excited to share this with you. This, this isn't meant just to be some sensational title on this video. I'm going to go over exactly what this is, where it comes from, how we use it, and most importantly of all, why we use it. So let's get started. So what is chitosan? Well, it's the byproduct of a polysaccharide known as chitin. Now chitin is the second most prevalent polysaccharide on earth, second only to cellulose. It is the major molecule that makes up the exoskeleton of certain arthropods and insects. So we're talking about like, for instance, the shell waste from things such as shrimp, crab, lobster, and even the exoskeleton of black soldier fly larva. It's even present in the mouthpieces of certain nematodes. It also exists in the cell walls of certain fungi, specifically mycorrhiza. Now, it does not exist in plant or trees, but plants and trees have cell receptors that have the ability to recognize it when you apply it through a foliar feed. So the way the chitosan is processed is they take the chitin, they grind it down, and it is put through a series of highly alkaline heavy chemical processes. It is really nasty stuff. But the good news is, is that green chemistry, organic chemistry, has begun to show that they are able to produce a higher quality product at the end result of going with organic processes to take the chitin to chitosan. Which makes sense. I mean, if you think about it, if organic processes didn't already exist, the world would already be filled with all kinds of shrimp and lobster and crab shells. I mean, we wouldn't have any place to even live. It'd be everywhere. So that's a really, really big plus moving forward because this may eventually mean that we can actually make this at home through specific processes like things such as lactic acid bacteria, LAB. Now lastly, I just want to make sure that this is known so that somebody doesn't accidentally stumble across this and think, oh my goodness, this is liquid plastic. Yes, this is not a bacteria, it is not a fungus. Chitosan is what's known as a biopolymer, okay? Polymers, they come from the petroleum industry. That's, that's your plastics, that's your ceramics. Everything from the plastic water bottle that you're drinking out of right now to the plastic pot that you put your tomato plant in, that is polymer. But a biopolymer is a biological organism that was used to make that plastic, biological plastics. And that's what's happening. I mean, um, chitosan is being used in many different industries. It's not just being used in ag. It's being used in the plastic industry to make, you know, biological plastics. I mean, look at my coffee cup here. This right here that I get from my coffee each morning, this is made from chitosan. It's a, it's a biopolymer. So it's used by the plastics industry. It's used by everything from big pharma to the healthcare industry. It's even used in the medical industry to a certain degree. Um, but the main thing to really understand with regards to agriculture is it's only really begun to find its home in these past 10 years, which is probably why you, me, and everybody else has not really heard a whole lot about it. And what little we have heard about it has been really mixed information. So those are just the basics, just to kind of give you an overview and an understanding and some background. But now it's time to really get into it. Let's take a look at how we're going to use this and most importantly, why we're going to use this. First and foremost, we're going to look at it from the standpoint of a foliar feed. Now, do you remember earlier when I was talking about how plants and trees do not contain chitin in their chemistry? 
but that they're able to recognize it through the cell receptors that they have, like for instance, in their leaves. What happens is, is when you apply the chitosan in a foliar feed to your leaves of your plants, your trees, it creates an immediate defense response in the plant or the tree. It thinks it's under attack, even though it's not. So what does it do? It ramps up all the defense mechanisms inside of its system, its immunity, everything goes into high alert. It really strengthens your plant and your tree. Now, as if that wasn't impressive enough, the next thing is what really got me asking a lot of questions and is part of the reason why it took me so long to finally move on this, and that was that it destroys pathogenic bacteria and fungi, but does not harm the good guys. I really, really was just dumbfounded by this because I'm like, I, I have to understand how that's happening and why, because that alone is more than enough reason for me to want to use this product. But it also is the same for insects. It's really easy on the good guys, but will wipe out the bad guys. So grasshoppers, green hornworms, aphids, anything that is really detrimental to the plant or tree gets wiped out. And it's really interesting for the reasons why this happens. I have some uh, content down in the description box below that I want you guys all to look at after my video here. There's a three part series that was held with some farmers down in southeastern United States. I believe it was out of uh, Atlanta, Georgia, where they went through all the details of the things that I'm sharing with you right now and a lot more scientific specific data and examples and actually hard facts. I really encourage you guys to take a look at that. Um, and one of the things that they described in there from the foliar feed standpoint is that the reason why it destroys the bad guys, not the good guys, is because the bad guys do not have chitin in them and the good guys do. Remember earlier in my video here when I was saying that it's in the cell walls of certain fungi like mycorrhiza? Mycorrhiza has chitin. Other fungi, really bad fungi, don't and the chitosan wipes it out. Just completely and totally wipes it out both as a foliar feed and as we're gonna see next also when we start to look at this from the standpoint of a soil drench. But as a foliar feed, this is what I did. I went ahead and I mixed it with a soap, a liquid soap. Now in Korean natural farming, we typically don't use a wetting agent, but I decided to go with one here because I was looking at the chitosan from this particular product. It was pretty liquidy and I thought, you know what? Let's go ahead and make sure that it definitely sticks to the leaves, both on the top and on the underside layers of the leaves themselves. So I mixed it with some liquid soap and I went really heavy on the ratio here. I went with about a one to 10 ratio of chitosan to water. And the reason is because it's been raining in my area and I want to make sure that I get this on for at least a good 24 hours before it gets washed off. So I went really heavy with the, um, the application on the leaves, but it did really well. And as you can see, I mean, you can see the soap layer that it made a nice film on the leaf floor and uh, it worked really well. So now as we begin to look at this from the soil drench end of things, what you're going to see is that a lot of the same things that it does as a foliar feed is also happening in the soil. I, this is amazing to me. Um, for starters, it kills both pathogenic bacteria and fungi. I mean, that alone, I, how can you lose if it truly does that? It's taking out the bad guys in the soil just like it's doing on the leaf cover for your plants and trees. And again, it does not harm any of the good bacteria and fungi in your soil, but it works with them to convert chitin and chitosan through a process known as chitinase. Remember when we were looking at this from the foliar feed side of things and I was telling you how when you spray it onto your plant or your tree's leaves, the plant and the tree is able to recognize the chitosan through the cell receptors. What it's doing when it, when it ramps up those defenses, what it's doing is it sees and it senses the chitosan. It's like, hey, I'm under attack and it creates what's known as an enzymatic chitinase response. So, I mean, as you can see, I mean, on the, on the foliar feed side, that's amazing, but it's doing this very same thing in the soil as well. It also works with the fungi and the bacteria to not only wipe anything out that would otherwise be pathogenic, but to enhance their ability to do their job and break down the chitin and the chitosan. And then the benefit to all this is that the chitinase that is responding to all this gets taken back up through your plant or tree it's just, it's almost like putting your plant or your tree on steroids when this takes place. So if for instance, you're using mycorrhizal fungi such as I am um, in the root zones of your trees or your plants, this is going to be enhanced by the chitosan in your soil. They're gonna to work together. The chitinase that is left over after it's broken down chitin and chitosan 
is going to be facilitated not only through mycorrhiza, but the other good fungi and bacteria that are in your soil to help the uptake of your plant or tree. It's, it's just an amazing, amazing amendment. Going with the soil drench is even easier. All you gotta do is just fill your bucket, like a five gallon bucket, about halfway full. With a five gallon bucket, one third of a cup represents basically roughly about one to 250 in the ratio department. So that's what we're gonna do here. One third of a cup. And resume filling the rescue bucket. After you've mixed the solution for the soil drench, just go ahead and water down the area you're gonna apply it to so it's not bone dry. We're going a little bit easier that way. For me, this is really simple because I'm just simply going into the areas that I remediated the trees last year. And this is where it's gonna be applied. Now, once you've gotten your area all nice and damp, go ahead and just apply your solution. You can add it slowly, you can pour it in, whatever, it doesn't really matter. Just try to make sure you get it evenly distributed in your area. I think one of the other amazing things about this is that the benefits that I shared with you guys in this video, I mean, this isn't even the exhaustive list. This was just the most high percentage things that I thought that everybody would probably be interested in, in looking at a new amendment like this. But I mean, there's so much else to this and I don't mean to sound like a broken record, you guys, but this is why I'm saying, please check out the links that I have in the description box below. Not just the three part series with the farmers from uh, Southeastern United States, but there's another video in there that was just released earlier this year, I think it was around February, that confirms a lot of what was already being talked about by the three-part series. And that was why I was finally ready not only to just use this in my garden this year, but put this video together to really highlight a lot of the things that all these videos talk about. But they're really interesting, they're great information, and I'll just leave you with a couple additional things. These are some, just some final other benefits that you may want to be aware of. It increases flowering and fruiting yields. And if you look at those videos, you're gonna see it directly from the farmers. And those people do not have time for messing around. They don't have time for snake oil. They don't have time for sensationalism. They live the farming life. I mean, they, they're, the roof over their head, the food on their table, the clothes on their back come from their ability to produce a crop every single season. It enhances seed germination. And in fact, I was gonna share some additional video with you in this one on this particular topic, but it's already so long at this point, I just don't wanna put you guys to sleep, but I was having a devil of a time getting any jalapenos to um, germinate this year. And I finally, after you know, 0 and 3, March, April, and May, I just struck out all three months. Right at the beginning of June, I added a little bit of chitosin, I seed soaked a few jalapeno seeds in it, and I got one of them to sprout. Now, maybe it's coincidence, I don't know, but it touts the ability to enhance seed germination, and I had that as proof. But the thing that really blew me away, and I mean, you guys, if you've been following my channel for any length of time now, you know this about my garden. One of my biggest concerns has been heavy metals. <laughs> the video that I finally came across just this year, which was confirming everything that I've already had going back to 2019, also highlighted the fact that chitosan is an extremely powerful chelator of heavy metals. I mean, that that's it. I mean, I'm done. I mean, stick a fork in me and pull me out. I'm, I'm done. That is exactly what my whole focus is. I mean, I've got bioremediation already going on on my property and now I have this to add to it. I, it's, it's just a blessing. So anyway, you guys, I just want to leave you with these final thoughts. If you have any questions, you know, pop something down in the comment section below. And I'll be more than happy to get back to anybody with anything that you have to ask on it. Now, I think what I'm probably going to do is I'm gonna give it a couple weeks to go ahead and settle into the ground. And then once that is done, I'm actually gonna start the compost tea regime, which I'm really excited to share with all of you. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, give me a thumbs up and share it with somebody that you know. If you hadn't subscribed to my channel yet, I really hope that you'd maybe give consideration to doing that and hit the bell notification icon if you would so that you can be alerted when I upload new content. Listen, wherever you are in this world today or tonight, you take care. Bye for now.